they always ask if BPH and prostate cancer are same or are they going to intermingle or they are two different diseases and can a man who has got BPH get prostate cancer? So there's always been a confusion, friends, regarding BPH and prostate cancer. And let's unravel this and probably look into what does it mean. BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia is a change which is a benign change, a non-cancerous change. This change can happen to every alternate individual beyond his age of 50s. That means men beyond 50s will have changes in the prostate because of hormone changes which happen. What triggers this, what triggers the change is not known. But like women have got menopause and hormone changes, men also have got various hormone changes happening in the men's health and the male hormone group, the testosterone group. While that happens, the trigger mechanisms which could bring about the hyperplasia or increase in number of cells, thus bringing enlargement of the prostatic gland, brings about changes in the urinary system. Both BPH and prostate cancer are changes in the prostate triggered beyond the age of 40s only. So men in their 40s to 50s and beyond could undergo a trigger or a mechanism change in the prostatic environment or milieu. And in doing so, the prostate can enlarge, which is looked up on an ultrasound as an enlarged gland, a gland which getting enlarged probably bothers an individual on the other side of the table. But a doctor or a urologist would be deeply interested in your urinary health. So beyond 50 is as urinary changes happen, both in terms of obstruction to the urinary flow, which is resulting directly from the prostate undergoing a hyperplasia or undergoing a change which could block the urethra that it is wrapping around. The changes can actually lead to all those complaints which men have. And we know that BPH brings about changes of obstruction or irritation to the bladder. The obstruction is all about men complaining urinary flow being of a poor stream, taking time to start urination, taking time to complete urination, and possibly don't empty their bladder before they leave their toilet. So all these issues of obstruction to the urinary flow are a result of the prostatic change, which um, very loosely is talked about enlargement of the prostate, which again is a benign kind of a change happening in majority of individuals. As I said, every alternate man beyond the 50 years of age could have changes as early as 50s, could also experience the same change which he has sustained gradually in his late 70s and 80s. It did not mean that the prostate changes happened in 70s and 80s, but it was progressive and gradual, did not become bothersome till a point in time. The other change which happened is an irritative change to the bladder. The bladder gets irritated or the bladder has got storage issues as a result of an obstruction developing distal to it. That obstruction which is brought at the bladder neck or the bladder outflow, the bladder learns a secondary behavior of contracting erratically. And therefore, you have got frequency, urgency, and urge incontinence as a man and as a male as progression happens around. And that becomes more bothersome to you in the background of a gradually obstructing gland, no gradually obstructive symptoms. So BPH is a benign change. BPH is what men do suffer from. And BPH is something which one needs to be aware almost for sure. Friends, we are sitting on September 4th, which happens to be uh, the fourth day of September, the Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, which I would say Positive Prostate Health Awareness Month. In other words, we are trying to reach the society from Coke Lab and Hospital and making it possible that people understand that at this point in time, as changes happen and they happen so gradually, many a times we miss it. So BPH is common. BPH is a change which you can pick up much early by the understanding of obstruction that you have to your urinary passage. And if that happens, so you necessarily go to your urologist in your cities and see a urologist who evaluates you, evaluates you by scoring your complaints, looks at an IPSS symptom score. And the symptom score gives us an idea as to whether your problem is mild or moderate or severe. He examines you by doing an exa external examination of your genitals, the abdominal wall, looking at a digital rectal examination, evaluating the prostate with his index finger, which is actually trained uh, to, in a urologist, to be able to identify the prostate and pick up suspicions earlier than other evaluations. He also does blood tests to look at your general health. He looks at your kidneys health by looking at your serum creatinine. He looks at that all important test called serum PSA, prostate specific antigen, uh, organ specific marker, which is secreted by the prostate and that's measured in the blood. So he does all that. He evaluates you. He finally does a test called Euroflowmetry. The complaints that you have on obstruction is picked up best by the way you pass urine and full bladder in a computerized toilet. And that gives all about you. So friends, we were talking about BPH or a benign disease. But you're sitting right now on 4th September into the Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. And that's where it is important for us to also know that 
few patients could have a change in a different direction where their DNA changes in the background of a hormone trigger and these patients would develop something called as prostate cancer. Prostate cancer uh, disease process, which we talk today as an early awareness and the management is a key. Aiming that kind of an awareness from India to the platform and from the platforms uh, that we talk today to you, it is important to make you aware that prostate cancer does not come with any very specific signs and symptoms like I did talk about BPH. So PPH and prostate cancer could be intermingled, could be in the same gland. Now, these are histopathological changes. These are changes internally, but they could bring symptoms in men. And symptoms of prostate cancer could be similar to symptoms of BPH, or it could be completely asymptomatic. We picked up a health checkup evaluation. We picked up a PSA report. We examined you then by your digital rectal examination. The finger examination was suspicious. We did a biopsy and we moved forward to cure you by a radical robotic prostatectomy. That's the way many patients do come and see us out here in the Department of Urology. And we take this forward to the next level of complete cure, whereas the patient was not even suspecting a problem. So health checkup is one way where people promote themselves to get screened of anything which they could pick up early, that they have no complaints. The other way around is any complaints that a male has beyond his 50s, where he has got complaints of urinary system in terms of obstruction or irritation, could be evaluated by a urologist in your city and your country. And probably when they evaluate you, they look at all these aspects to identify whether you're going in a direction of more common BPH or enlargement and occlusion of the urinary passage, and therefore your complaints, or in a direction which could be incidental as a can cancer prostate. A cancer prostate never comes with a, with a loud music or loud sound. It could be an incidental finding or it could be a finding as a result of examination, evaluation, during changes which are happening that become bothersome to a man who comes and complains. And let's also know that prostate cancer is familial many a times and first degree relatives. That means the son of a prostate cancer uh, patient in his 40s and 50s would be closely watched and evaluated and beyond. And anybody who is elder brother has got a prostate cancer and he's a male in his 40s, 50s and beyond would still be evaluated. So these are not panic signs, but these are all close to um, identifying and being proactive towards prevention. So prevention is the cure today. In other words, prevention is better than cure. You look at preventing trouble and preventing could be even early pickup. The attempt today on awareness for prostate cancer is to pick up early trouble and probably identify, treat and completely cure it so that you are done and dusted out of a problem which could happen or which is already happening. You're sustaining it by ways of adjusting to it. Friends, men sustain this problem. They continue to live with it and the changes continue to be bigger and bigger. So for everybody who is beyond 50s as a man and a male, who has got issues, issues in urine, and these are of the region of obstruction or irritation, that means frequency, urgency, and urge incontinence, which become more bothersome in the background of an obstruction, which has possibly been longstanding in the age group from 50s to 80s, needs to be evaluated. A urologist is qualified to look at an examination, evaluation, and identification and quantifying the kind of a level that you are in. He also picks up a change between this and that and accordingly gives you a diagnosis of BPH, which is more of a prostatic enlargement, prostatomegaly, and occlusion to the urinary passage. If there is a suspicion, the suspicion is picked up by a clinical examination, by a combination of clinical examination and a raised PSA, which is again thoroughly evaluated and probably looked at. If there is a doubt, then we go ahead to prove that it's a prostate cancer by a biopsy and aim towards picking this as early as possible towards a cure. So friends, Prostate Cancer Awareness Month in September comes with uh, understanding that all men who have got changes in the urinary system would obviously see the urologist and look at that happening in time. Thank you so much.